Okay, so we are back with Five Minute Fridays. We got Severman coming in from Germany, a uh, super talented producer. Uh, you could check out our track on Spotify if you want to, but he's been making huge moves of his own. Just released a new radio show on his YouTube channel where he helps out tons of producers where you can check that out if you want to. It just released this morning. And uh, yeah, I'm super excited to be on the phone with him. We're going to learn some stuff and see what we can get. How are you feeling today, man? I'm feeling great, man. Uh, thanks for having me. Looking forward to uh, this uh, little interview. Yeah. yeah, totally, man. So what made you, I mean, I just watched the uh, radio show this morning. What made you want to start out with that? Why, why start a radio show? I'm curious. Well, honestly, the, the main reason is because I just love DJ. <laughs> so, mm. you know, I just felt like, okay, maybe if I do like a regular thing of like doing a, a, a monthly radio show, which I'm doing now, I can get more like consistent with my DJ sets before I just used to like uh, post like a DJ set every three four months or something but i think if i you know, have a bit more consistency in, in there it helps me to uh yeah stay stay good at dj because i don't like unlearn it or something and uh, the second reason is uh yeah it's also like um giving support to other artists obviously playing their songs that's something that i also want to do and mm. yeah these are like the two two reasons yeah, I really love that, you know, trying to support other artists. I feel like that's what I've always kind of associated with you is like your whole brand is seems to have started out with, you know, you being a producer trying to help other producers, which I can relate to since we're, you know, we're both trying to grow. And, uh, you know, I'm sure I like everyone else discovered you through YouTube. Um, <laughs> That's pretty much where where you're at. And, uh, you know, I'm trying to start a YouTube channel, too, and I'm sure a lot of people could find production stuff on your channel. But I'm curious more on the YouTube side. Uh, how's that been going? How's your YouTube growth been? And how would you say that process has been working out for you from the beginning? Um, like I, I pretty much started posting regular videos like production tutorials or basically videos where you see me um almost two years ago so since i did that i actually had pretty like solid growth it's not like uh, a huge growth or something uh but it's actually, i think it's working uh it's been working really well for me and um a lot of people yeah sort of joining my community which is great to see um yeah before that i actually had I had this idea to make videos, production videos for, for a long time, but it actually took me quite a few months, maybe even a year to actually record the first video until, until I mm -hmm. did it. And yeah, but, but I, I, I'm happy that I finally did so. And definitely yeah, was, was a good uh, step, I would say, because, mm -hmm. you know, I was also thinking, yo, is it even worth it? Like, would there even be people watching my videos? But yeah, I'm, I'm glad I did it. Yeah, man, totally. I'm the same way. I mean, I started my YouTube channel maybe a month ago, but mm -hmm. I had thought about, I had the idea for like two years, yeah. but I could just never go. It's like kind of daunting at first, but um, I will agree once you get going, it's actually kind of fun. <laughs> Definitely, but, um, yeah. Would you say the growth was like uh, slow at first and then picked up over time? Or was it like, you know, you just kind of, caught one video that exposed you or how how was the growth process mm, well there there were a few videos that definitely helped me um grow more than i do regularly you can say i have like a sort of this baseline of, of growth but then one once in a while i post a video that really gets picked up by the algorithm and really pushed by it so this sort of gives me a little boost every now and then um but yeah obviously the more videos that you post the more content you have on there the more stuff you have on youtube that people can uh, watch and uh, consume so yeah the, the more stuff you put out there i think it definitely helps with uh with the growth obviously it's like the more videos you have on there the more people will come and from there you know everything will be like a how do you say like snowball effect or something mm -hmm. so yeah definitely yeah, for sure. And also, you know, I have to give credit for just the quality of the not even the videos, but more just what you were giving, because Progressive House specifically, that's a tough genre. And there's maybe a thousand people on YouTube who claim to make Progressive House professionally and will show you how to do it. And um, I think uh, the reason I subscribed to you at first was I was like, oh, he knows how to do it. 
<laughs> and um, I think your first song I heard was uh, "Runaway" on Spotify, oh, which is okay. back old days. But um, and uh, I heard that, and I was like, "Oh, he he's Monsi. Uh, he's the same guy. <laughs> he's he's his ghost producer. That's that's been the secret the whole time." And um, <laughs> and so yeah, I just started following just because the level of production was definitely great. I would say, and you've definitely attracted a lot of opportunity just from the YouTube channel. I feel like, you know, you've been turning the heads of like bigger producers and industry professionals just from the YouTube channel. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Cause I was curious if your YouTube channel, you know, was able to attract the eyes of industry heads or something like that. Not even necessarily to get you signed. Cause you know, talent labels sign you on the music, but it's more like um, curious. Like when I see you, being featured on revealed discord for stuff or something like that. I'm curious if they choose you for that because they know you have a brand with a community or just cause you're a cool producer. I'm curious how you think the brand has affected that. Um, well, you know, it definitely helps to get connected with people or with, um, labels or whatever, or with people that, that work at the label, whatever. Um, but I wouldn't say that necessarily the YouTube channel was like the main reason why I've got on a label like revealed. It's definitely, of course, first the music, right? If the if the music is right, if it's, uh, it's good production or whatever, um, this will be like the main uh, matter or how do you say like the, the main reason, of course. Mm -hmm. um, but sure, like having now this this YouTube channel with with the audience has definitely helped me to to connect with people also with with producers, you know, actually, I have a lot of uh, producers that actually discovered me for YouTube as well, like you, but not just like other producers that want to learn music production, but also already established producers. For instance, uh, White Wipes actually uh, found my YouTube channel because I made like a White Wipes video, or uh, actually Michael, who's also a producer on Revealed, found my YouTube channel as well, and now I'm working on the call up with him. Mm -hmm. So these are definitely things that, uh, yeah, helped me in uh, that regard. Yeah, totally. And uh, we would never have had a collab if it weren't for your YouTube yeah, channel. Sure. So. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so I guess it worked out. Um, <laughs> so I will say that, you know, you've definitely become a house name in the progressive house industry. You know, everyone seems to think progressive house and then they uh, automatically a lot of the producers are now thinking Severman, which I think is a great thing because you know you want that name i'm curious um are you always going to keep making progressive house is that going to be your thing or are you trying to expand or do anything else or how's that going well i'm probably not going to keep making progressive forever i think that would be a, a bit naive or something i don't know i mm -hmm. mean the, the time will obviously show um what will happen in the future i don't know i'm definitely trying to make something that stands out a bit more right now um I kind of I kind of do want to change it up a bit and go for a more unique sound. I don't, I don't mean that I want to completely like leave progressive house behind or something, but I just want to mm -hmm. try giving it a a fresh twist. Like for instance, something that we did with my track this feeling, uh we added a hip hop type of break, which I think uh, really made the track stand out because I don't actually know any other progressive house tracks that have like a hip hop beat break or whatever. And something mm -hmm. that I want to take actually to to the next level i kind of want to you know add something to my sound that really sets it apart from other producers or other um yeah tracks um so i'm definitely open like for, for new sounds but for now we'll definitely stay in like the melodic progressive house um yeah niche or style yeah totally i mean that's like basically i think what every producer in the world is trying to do yeah that hasn't it's, made it yet is yeah. take the genre they love and make it in a way that makes them stand out and i saw your interview with uh, ortsy where he was talking about that as well um that's where i'm at same place because you know through our collab we both demonstrated we know how to make the melodic progressive house but in the end that's not what they um what they want it seems yeah. like yeah <laughs> which is an interesting concept i've really been struggling with that as well um hip-hop break that's the key that's the secret <laughs> now now every single one of my tracks is going to have a hip-hop break 
I'm going to take your sound and you're going to be out of options. I've, I've actually already heard some tracks that, that like people sent me for feedback that were like progressive house and then had a hip hop uh, break. Uh, in, like, see, the second people are, we're, we're taking notes. We're... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> already so, making some, um, some influence there. Yeah, totally. That's that's you're just changing the industry. Um, one thing I've been wanting to do is uh, find a way to use. And my dad actually told me to do this, who's not a producer at all. But it's just something I really wanted to try out. And he said, you got to use horns, <laughs> like um, big brass sections and make like um, kind of hip hop horns in progressive house. And I've been trying to do that for years. I cannot figure out how to make it happen. <laughs> It's Honestly, really that's, hard. that sounds like super interesting. I actually love horns, especially like these more cinematic, orchestral sounding uh, horns or, or sounds in general. Mm. Honestly, I don't have any good libraries for that, I think. Um, I think like, what is it called? Native Instruments or something. I think they have a really cool uh, like sound library for these kind of sounds. I don't have it yet, but mm. I think it's definitely something that I should maybe try out. Oh, you're going to take my idea. Yeah, this is a good idea. <laughs> nice. I'm... My next track will we'll have uh, horns all over it. <laughs> perfect, perfect. I'm just going to be loading up the comments. Yeah. Um, but I'm curious then, that seems like a good transition because, you know, you were talking about you don't have a whole lot of horns. I'm curious, what are your main, like, I know you use Spire and like the main synths and stuff like that. I see that in your videos, but is there any like... um cool vsts that maybe people don't know about that you know you recommend that are interesting yeah um that's one that goes out to all the fl studio users <laughs> um it's a plugin called flex which is a, like fl studio native plugin so if you're using fl studio definitely check out the plugin uh it's like you i guess you don't have fl studio but uh like to, to explain <laughs> what the plugin is like to you it's pretty much a native version of Nexus. I got it, like it's a sample-based uh, uh, plugin or VST, and it has really cool uh, synth sounds like leads, basses, but it also has mm -hmm. uh, real instruments like pianos, strings, trumpets, and stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't think it has horns yet, but maybe it's something they could add. But yeah, yeah this is a really, really underrated plugin actually for for FL Studio users out there. I see. Well, that's very helpful for me. Um, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just messing. <laughs> that's actually great. No, a lot of my audience is my whole 100 subscribers is a lot of FL studio producers. So that's definitely going to help them out. I appreciate that. Yeah, I think it's a cool plugin. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I use Nexus a lot. Um, Nexus is great. The Kashmir library in Nexus has a lot of live instruments that I use. Okay, I didn't actually know there's a Kashmir library for uh, Nexus. Yeah, Kashmir made a whole library. It's actually like one of their biggest ones. It's okay. very nice. And it has like all his signature leads and plucks and such. Sounds awesome. Um, I only, I've only i only tried the uh, Kashmir Silent One pack, I think. It's the only oh, pack this I... from the Sounds of Kashmir? Yeah, from the uh, first pack, I think it is. I use his mid bass a lot from that. But... <laughs> Yeah, the ang angry base angry base war <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> do we, we produce too similar this is why our progressive house never blows up <laughs> i'm joking i'm joking you're actually making big moves on glow records i've noticed you have like some consistent releases there um is that like a label you would recommend for like sort of up-and-comers who can't make it to like protocol or something like that yeah, for sure, hundred percent. I think Glow is a really uh, good label for for upcoming artists that want to, you know, maybe make that next step to to get mm -hmm. maybe on the label like Protocol, uh, Revealed Spinning, or whatever. Yeah. <clears throat> um, it's you know it's a good label for progressive house, um, but they also they sound other stuff as well like Big Room or I think they're also open for more chill tracks maybe. So if you have mm -hmm. a demo, of just just send it to Glow definitely. Awesome. Yeah, man, that's, that's great stuff. Um, curious, basically, if there's um, stuff you've learned by navigating the industry, because I noticed you get in touch with a lot of big producers. Do you have any like, um, like networking strategies that you do to get a hold of that? Or do they reach out to you for the YouTube channel? Or how does that connection get established for you? 
Well, honestly, um, yeah, there are actually quite a few producers that reach out to me because they found me on YouTube. So that's how a lot of connections sort of started, you know. Mm -hmm. um, as I said, I don't know. I just I just have my connections, and uh, when I, I don't know want to have some some feedback, I obviously reach out to those producers or reach out to me for for feedback or if we have if i release a new track they might share it on their story show their support if there's a song from from the, from those producers i'm gonna promote it as well on my radio show or whatever you know on instagram that's kind of how, how i keep these uh yeah, relations alive you can say sure yeah man i i think that's super important like um i talked about this with malarkey about networking but i think uh a lot of the newer producers sort of think it's like a, a value exchange much more yeah. than making friends. Yeah. It's, um, you, you have to give value to, to the person that you want to build a connection with, because if mm -hmm. you just, if you just like, yo, feedback, that's probably not going to work out. Right. So you want to make sure that you give them some type of value or that you at least show show them the appreciation to to check out your demo like for for taking the time to do so right so if you're just mm -hmm. like i i still have a lot of people that are sent me dm and just like drop the link and don't even say anything at all like really just that, a cold link yeah or or, or even just like a link and nothing or just like uh i want your feedback like something like that right so mm -hmm. obviously try to build a relation to to those people it's like imagine at school or at university or whatever there's there's a guy coming in like uh help me with my homework it's like why the fuck why, why <laughs> should i help you with your homework you know i think that's a maybe a good like example there to to show you why you also need those connections in the music industry of course mm -hmm. no i think that's huge i um you know one of the first bigger not even big big producer i'm not disrespecting he's huger than way bigger than me but um i one of my first producer connections was wild vibes and um he was one of the first guys i really got connected with and the way it happened was i actually emailed him about his products on youtube trying to help him with like the sales copy <laughs> just saying like hey you could maybe write this or like you know I think the files could be improved in this way. And it wasn't like disrespect. It was saying like mm -hmm. productive criticism. And like, you know, basically he was like, dude, totally. Let me do that. You're an amazing person. And then uh, I just kept, I think it was like maybe a year before I even asked him for anything. I just kept hitting him up. Great song, great song, great song. Love it, love it, love it. And then eventually I asked for feedback on one song and he gave it. <laughs> yeah, this is exactly, this is exactly how, how it should be. Like, you know, try to first build that relation by maybe telling telling that artist y'all really like your track uh the new one that just came out or i don't know maybe like you have a youtube channel i i can help you maybe with some things there or whatever and then mm -hmm. then when you have that yeah. connection going you can you know what maybe if you want to give some feedback bro feel free to do so we really appreciate it something like that mm -hmm. one tip i learned from this businessman he's a youtuber but not in music at all was he actually offers skills that he has that the person may not have for free in exchange for knowledge and information like mentorship so he'll reach out and he'll say like hey i can edit videos like no one else and i will edit your videos for free just give me like an hour a week please and like that's what he did and i think an hour a week could be excessive of course but like you know that mindset i think is really cool idea like if you have like a skill like copywriting video editing or like graphic design or something that a lot of music producers may not have, it might not be a good idea or might not be a bad idea to, you know, offer that to someone for free and just see where that takes you. Don't even ask for anything. Just do it and see where it goes. Sure. I just try it out and, and, and see if it works. By the way, Severman, I'm a really good video editor and I'd be happy to do it for free. <laughs> <I'm kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> But uh, either way, speaking of video editing, I want to go back to YouTube just a little bit, just for my own sake, because, you know, I'm starting out a YouTube channel and it's slow in the beginning. I'm curious if you have any tips from myself or anyone else trying to start a YouTube channel, because I would say that it's definitely so much information out there and it's better to get it from somebody who's doing it. So I'm curious if you have any advice in that regard. 
but you know like like basically how to um grow with a youtube channel i guess basically any tips on youtube okay. channeling that you have like that you think is okay. important that i should know you have to obviously you have to make good content but you also have to make content content that there's an audience for right if you um make content that nobody is interested nobody will come watch it but if you make um let's say a video called how to make music like this artist maybe there are people searching for it and this way you might reach new potential people that that might want to subscribe to your channel um mm. so if you i don't know let's give me give me a, give me an example if you just make um make a video called free progressive house flp that might not really reach that many people because people might actually be searching for more specific things like how do I make a progressive file house drop in the style of uh, Nicky Romero or whatever, you know? So you have to kind of make sure that you find a topic and a niche that people are looking for. And another tip is try to... Um, yeah, try to go for a niche that isn't obviously oversaturated. If you just make make a video where there are already like a million videos on it, it will obviously be hard to to uh, get like discovered by other people. Mm -hmm. So yeah, make something that's like searchable that people are interested in, and make something that isn't like already oversaturated. Yeah, so like balancing volume with competition, basically. Yeah, I think that's I the key. Yeah, that's awesome stuff. Um, I'm definitely trying that. I don't know if I'm succeeding, but um, um, I'm curious. One thing that I'm trying to do is not just make, um, I'm kind of targeting producers a little bit, like artists, because in the end, my whole shtick is that I'm a producer trying to make it, you know, and I'm documenting that journey, trying to get there. That's why I called it the road to Tomorrowland. I'm curious. Um, what are your thoughts on like doing things that aren't just solely production in that regard in terms of targeting producers? Because that's what I'm trying to do right now is not be like every producer that, you know, has how to make music like blank in five minutes. I'll throw a few of those in there because I know people want it, but um, it's not all I'm trying to do. And I'm trying to mix it up. I'm curious what your thoughts are in that regard. I think that's totally fine. I'm not a... I'm not a fan myself of only making those tutorials, like how to make music, like this and that artist or whatever. I think obviously you always need to find the right balance between maybe videos that you want to do because you just think they're interesting to you. And then maybe make those videos where you know, okay, there's really an, an audience maybe for that, or maybe, okay, this is going to be a video that a lot of people will watch. Now, for instance, now with my new radio show, this is not um, something that people will, will search for, but I know that it's not, I don't do it because like I want to reach a new audience with my radio show that I've just started. Mm -hmm. It's just something that I enjoy doing. So I, I, I just do it as well. Yeah. I got a lot of tips out of that one little sentence that was like, <laughs> do things you enjoy and also to get an audience. And then also I got kind of like, you know, make a mix of content that builds a new audience but also entertains the one you have which is very important and something that i should do more of. so that is super helpful i appreciate that because um even if you're not one of the largest producer youtube channels like andrew huang or something like that i will say that you know your community is very close with you like you your supporters are very engaged and uh everyone who follows you like really sticks around i'm curious uh is that was that something you did intentionally like really trying to build a community like is there any like brand building advice in that regard that you may have in terms of making sure the following you have is more like a less of just like a oh i like that guy and more of like i connect with that guy well, honestly, this is not, I didn't really do this like intentionally, actually, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is what it might be like, you think actually not. Um, yeah, the way I started, I, was, I just started with making tutorials on, on my own tracks. 
right? So the first like proper video that, that I did was how I made my track call in memories. <laughs> and everything just sort of started from there. So then I had this idea, maybe I can make a remake of another song because that's something that maybe people might actually look for. I mean, a remake of a Martin Garrix track or whatever. And then I made videos like, okay, how to make um, a Hardwell drop or something. But I never, I never actually really did like videos. I, I never had a strategy where I thought, yeah, okay, I'm gonna make people connect with me this way. That's just something that naturally just like happened. Mm -hmm. And I think if if you just if you just like make the videos that that you enjoy, like if you enjoy it, and if you're also like authentic and real, I think people will uh, notice that and. You know, hit that subscribe button, or uh, actually, will we'll try to like keep up with with you and your your content. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's interesting. Very different answer than a lot of the ones I've heard before, which is actually kind of cool. Because um, you know, I'm also in college for business, so I hear a lot of business strategies. So everything is like you know, plan it out, have like five months of content planned with a specific purpose and. <laughs> each video does accomplishes this goal. And uh, that's actually a much more likable answer. Just make your videos and be real. Like, yeah, I'm actually, and it's something my, sorry. yeah, no, go I'm, for it. I'm actually not like a business type of guy at all. I'm not like a guy who's like, yo, I'm gonna the ne next two, two months, I'm gonna post these videos, I'm gonna schedule everything. Mm -hmm. I'm just like a guy I just like, at the end, I just do what I enjoy doing. And obviously, I still try to like figure out what people want. So I'm kind of trying to find that that uh, right balance there, right? The, the sweet spot. So I just go for what I like, but I don't have any like deep, like detailed strategies or something um, that I, I go after. Yeah. Oh, that's very good. My my uh, my uncle's actually been telling me for as long as I can remember. Just be authentic, please. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's something I've struggled with a lot in the past, like, because, you know, brand building can be a dangerous thing if you're trying to be something that you're not, which I think myself and a lot of artists I see have done at some point in their lives. Like, you know, trying to be too professional or more than they are is something I've done a lot. <laughs> and it's something I'm working on every day. That's kind of why I started this whole brand of like being a small artist if I can. Mm -hmm. make it work so that's very helpful advice and just reinforces it hearing it from somebody who's actually doing better than me so um yeah i appreciate that advice man um i have one more question before yeah. we go and that's gonna be essentially a question i ask everyone but everyone seems to have a different answer it's um you know in your time producing however long it's been however much success you've achieved or whatnot what is one thing you wish you knew before, like when you started in the beginning or even halfway through that you know now that really would have helped you out in the past? That it will, will take way longer than I would expect at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> it's like at you, the beginning, you answered I, that fast. Yeah, at the beginning, I when I got into music production, I was like, yo, maybe if I keep doing this for a year or two, I'm going to be like absolute pro. I'm going to be signed on all labels. And now I've, I've been producing for, what is it, eight years. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm I'm just like, I'm still just like starting with, with everything, right? <laughs> yeah. I don't I, yeah, I feel it's, like it's I, I'm yeah, I feel like I'm still at, at the start of the road, as you said. Yeah. And you've got like 15,000 people who think you've made it too. So it's like <laughs> all, so it's all levels, you know? Like, yeah. I think that's great advice. You answered that so fast. You were ready. You're like, no, nope, got it. <laughs> Jesus Christ, it's taking long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, um, but I, th I think this is something that a lot of people actually um, think as well. If they when they when they want to learn music production, they think it's something that will happen uh, fast. Like, okay, I'm just gonna open up Alpha Studio. I'm just gonna mess around with it, and then they think, okay. Um, in a year from now, I don't know, I might be a pro producer or something, but, but what I want to say is that it will take 
way longer and much more effort than you think in order to achieve something or into in order to be able to um, make good tracks. And that's why I also think is why a lot of people quit after like a year or two because they think there's no progress or something. But um, mm -hmm. the, the fact is that you have to keep pushing for more than just a year or two. And yeah, you just have to never give up. And that's, I think, also the reason why I am where I am now, because I didn't stop after two or three years. And I just, yeah, kept pushing. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome, man. And it's great to see, because I told you, I've seen you from like, what I assumed was probably like close to the start. But I'm sure you would tell me that when you released Runaway, that was nowhere near the start. <laughs> so, it's true, man. Like the the actual start for me was in 2014. That was when I actually started with like music production. You know, why did everyone start in 2014? <laughs> Maybe it's e the golden year for EDM music production. Everyone's like, oh, I started when Avicii and Calvin Harris, Axwell and Grosso, and they were all releasing their progress. Everyone started then. <laughs> Yeah, but it's it's probably because back then that was like when EDM was maybe like rising a lot with like mm -hmm. Martin Garrix and stuff where it really sort of popped up. And I think maybe that's what made a lot of people want to start uh, music production as well. Yeah. You know what's messed up is actually I started then too. So it's like <laughs> everyone <laughs> everyone started then. It's amazing. And it's also cool. I think Wild Crow was talking about this. Like, you know, we all started in 2014, but everyone's in different places like i think black code started then too really i think i could okay. be wrong don't god's sake don't quote me on that okay. but um and i know wild vibes did he he said that in an interview that he started okay. around that time wild crow did you did i did and okay, that's, that's just like a that's just like a ladder of like where we're at and in regards to how much it can vary i feel like when we yeah. all started at the same place yeah i think this is also actually uh worth um pointing out here because if there's one producer who maybe takes let's say four years to get signed on a certain label and you take longer that doesn't mean that you're bad at producing or anything it's just like every every producer has its uh, has its own um yeah background or, or journey and every everyone is different you know so yeah don't don't compare it like too much to to other people out there yeah, man, it's a lot of great, great stuff, like getting into some deeper mindset kind of ideas that I think is actually really important and not talked about enough. So yeah. I think it's very good. I mean, if you look, you know, K's, right? Yeah, sure. Uh, I was listening to his Revealed podcast and he only started K's when he was like 35 or like 40. Yeah. And but he had been producing for like 20 years or like oh. 50 and um he said like he you know he goes produce for some people he worked in like various producer groups he was in a rock band i think i could be wrong about that but he was he was doing stuff and he said by the time he started his own artist brand he already had the production knowledge and the chops to make it happen and he just went he just did it and he was like older than everyone but he's like i don't care let's do it um and now he's like the biggest in revealed. So, um, apart from like Hardwell, but yeah, uh, I think there's also good advice because like here, it also shows that like age or anything doesn't like matter at all. Like there's sometimes people asking, "Yo, bro, I'm 16. Am I too old to start music production?" No, <laughs> <laughs> like what questions? This no. I mean, we're both we're both 19, right? Are you uh, 19? Yeah, and we're we're where we are, and then. I think, uh, what is it? Wild Vibes is like, you know, 25 or something. And he started at the same time as us. People yeah. start at different times. Yeah, I think I think actually when I talked to um, White Crow, I think you said he's 27, 26, I think. So even older than uh, Wipes. I mean, it's just a year or two, but you know, there's, yeah. there's no like, limit in, in age or something. If you're... 60 <laughs> when you want to uh, do like want to start music production do it yeah man all our senior audience get get your stuff together let's go 
<laughs> but yeah, man. I mean, I think this has been a great conversation. We've talked, you know, we learned about I learned about YouTube and I hope the audience did too. We went over some serious mindset stuff, got into some deep uh deeper topics that I think a lot of people don't cover as much in the EDM industry, especially, you know, like yeah. there's a lot of music mindset. But um yeah, I mean you're a super knowledgeable guy and it's awesome to learn from you. I really appreciate it. Uh tell everyone, you know, where they can find you on social media if they're looking for you. Uh, Wait, basically just type DJ Severman on my profile would pick up uh pick uh pop up whatever platform it is. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um yeah, DJ Severman, he's on uh, YouTube, Instagram, Spotify, basically anything you use, he'll probably be there. Man gets around. He's huge. Uh, talk to you soon on social media. Thanks for coming around. Appreciate yeah. it. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it as well. Uh, that was a great talk. Uh, yeah, see you soon. Awesome. See you, man.